to. So welcome to another episode where instead of separating into kind of six different places, we're gonna kind of just do it all in one. So here's a little snippet, but first of all, let's head to Kawagoe. One of the places I'd recommend anyone who's visiting Tokyo should visit, as it's only an hour away from Tokyo itself. And so this place is known as Little Edo because of how well it's retained its culture from the Edo period itself. So we've made it to Kawagoe Kita Inn Temple and they seem to be having a kind of like Sunday market but it's really cool and then it's just in the middle of a temple so literally everyone's just set up stores in between the temple like the temples right there and then the stores all around us so but right next to this is a popular temple that people go to in Kawagoe from the 1700s and you can get a good old rickshaw ride as well so one of the key areas for Kawagoe in itself is the old town where pretty much everything here looks like it's from the Edo period. Like what people say when they arrive here is they feel like they've been transported back in time. What's cool is the designs of all the buildings here. It's like a long stretch of buildings that are just like literally olden day Japan. It's like this craft stores around here as well. Like you can make your own ring across the road there. Behind me is a knife store but lots of crafts everywhere, so much food as well, so. Basically, there'll be just lots for you to explore, especially if you um, like to eat and shop. There's a lot of traditional goods, handcrafted goods, and even a Ghibli store here that is just randomly on the street. Miffy all warehouse kitchen, if you're into that as well. You can get canned bread. Do I want canned bread? So aside from everything delicious on the main street, this place is called Candy Lane, which is known for selling traditional Japanese snacks and candy, I guess. I guess the better term is sweets. Definitely a great shout if you're a sweet tooth or looking for a souvenir for maybe your friends back at home. All the kids are getting this giant candy baguette. Alright, so this place is perfect if you're sick of the cityscape in Tokyo and just want to get away from a minute. And you can just take the ordinary bus or train, you don't need JR to get here. But now we're going to head another hour away from Tokyo to another city called Yokohama, which is the second most popular city in Japan. So big. But we're going to first head to the Cup Noodle Museum in Yokohama and uh, unfortunately I didn't know and book ahead so I wasn't allowed to make my own cup noodles. But there's also a bunch of other cool things to do here, like explore the entire history of the instant noodle from the start to the end. So we've got walls of noodles. But one of the cool things I didn't know about was that they had like a noodle bazaar with all these different kinds of noodles from different countries in the world. So I didn't want to try Korean just because I was there for three months, but there was all these other ones as well. So. I decided on trying three different ones. So you have a laksa, a mi goreng, and a pasta. Unfortunately, didn't get to try the Kazakhstan one just because it's closed. I don't know why I have this been there, but... Noodles are kind of broken, they're not very streamlined. The noodles. So, the noodles. Noodles aren't broken, like the uh, big already. So that's basically it for the Cup Noodle Museum. And I just wanted to mention that there's like a lot of cool shops around the Cup Noodle Museum as well, like Yokohama World Porters. So definitely make sure to explore and just browse around because you never know what you'll find. And so that gives us a little bit of time to talk about one of my favorite places in Yokohama, which is Cosmo World. And as you can see, it's a bit of a uh, thrill-seeking zone. But no, it's just a theme park with a lot of cool things to do, places to go. And honestly, even if you don't enjoy the ride, it's just a lot of cool places you can just chill. Because I don't know about you, but I personally don't enjoy rides, but it's nice to just sit on a bench and just take in the atmosphere. But there's actually a lot of things to do in Yokohama, but there wasn't too much time for me, so I missed out. But if you're into photos, I definitely recommend checking out the aquarium here. But let's head to the next location now.
This giant Buddha statue is what Kamakura is mainly known for, which is a big temple where you can actually go inside the Buddha as well. But another location I'd recommend popping by would be here. This is a five minute walk from the giant Buddha statue. And I would say it's a really nice garden. Just looking at the entrance so far, it's, it's well curated, well kept. I've heard, I've read lots of reviews saying that it's a really good place to relax and kick back for a bit. So the unique thing about this temple, personally, I would say would be its size and its location because it's just so much to wander around and look at. But if you walk towards the very top, you'll get this really nice view of the coastline as well. But Kamakura isn't only temples. There's a lot of shops, a lot of stops, and a lot of unique places to stop by. Like this music box museum, where if you book at the right times, you can actually sit there and make your own music box as well. But the most unique store there that I saw would be this store. It's a lot of swords, a lot of old weapons, and the whole lot. All right, so before I lose all the female viewers here because of weapons, uh, let's move on to the next location, which would be Hakure. Let's go up. Wow. Oh my god, this looks amazing. Oh. It is magical what you up to. Can I have a minute at your time? You want me to run here and put you. Yay! I love the sheer amount of photo opportunities and art pieces scattered around this entire park. There was just so much to do. That's me. But this was the main event. Literally why I came all the way here, just for the staircase. I'd highly, highly recommend coming here. But if you're in the area, make sure to go to an onsen as well. There's heaps of these around Hakone. Many of these places also allow you to just enter once. Many of these places also allow single day entry. So don't worry too much about having to stay overnight. Although staying in Hakone is a pretty good thing. I'd love to do one of these um, activities, especially pottery or even glass blowing, but I don't have much luggage space left and I still have two months to go, so it's not ideal, so. But Hakone, definitely a great away from the city kind of retreat. So for our next location, it's approximately two hours away north from Tokyo City. Definitely go if you have the JR Pass, otherwise it would cost you about 5,000 yen each way. So once you get to the station, you've got to take about a 30 minute bus to the actual park itself. This is such a huge park, you could probably spend a whole day here. Which I'm probably going to do. And then I saw Costco earlier, so I might have some food there. <laughs> and so these fields are one of the main exhibits of this park. Where in certain seasons, you either get fields and fields of blue or fields and fields of red. And I was a bit too early in the season, that's why it's a little bit patchy as well. But with appropriate planning though, you can definitely get it at the right time and see all these fields here. One thing I do want to point out though, is that it's not just a flower park. There's a lot of amusements for especially families and kids. But this place is definitely great for couples or families who just want to relax and get away from the city. That's so cute. Like these corn purses. Look, it's a turtle. I'm so split between the turtle and the whale. All right, I've gone with the whale just because of the design is uh, a lot more intricate and the otter for my brother. If I were to ever come here again, I would definitely make sure to bring a picnic mat, a whole picnic, the whole lot, just to just sit there and just bask in the sun. But let's head to our final day trip out of Tokyo, the Ashikaga Flower Park, which is also another two hours outside of Tokyo. I personally think everyone visiting Japan should visit this park if you're visiting in the right season. Wow, it's so cool. Just because I've never seen anything like it before. Like honestly, the sheer amount of wisteria flowers here was just amazing. Like I genuinely don't have the words to describe this. So just, just look and see. <laughs> So while strolling around, I found this wisteria flavored ice cream. So I wanted to give that a try. Yeah, this one wisteria. Purchased one, everything's all good. Wanted to try it and... Thank you. Let's go outside, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> 
I, uh, I dropped my ice cream <laughs> and the poor staff had to clean it up, unfortunately. They were nice enough to give me another cup. Feels bad though, but... Because I was trying to take a photo and I tilted the cone a bit and all of it dropped out, which was uh, extremely unfortunate. But besides that, everything about this park was amazing. Like, I would 100% come back again. Maybe I like this park more than the others because I actually went during full bloom. But I did notice they had a lot of wisteria themed and flavoured things as well, like, like these plushies. <laughs> But that pretty much wraps up six day trips that you can do out of Tokyo. So thanks for watching and let me know if you've been to these places in the comments as well. So remember to subscribe and um, I'll see you guys next time. Especially next time because like next time is sumo and that's really cool. So all right, take care.